Hey guys, today I'm going to read you a tweet and then we'll have a discussion on the logic and I guess economic impact of this hive mind. Wow, I can't believe Wizards Magic allows PewDiePie to play MTG Arena. This is completely unacceptable. I don't want this person in my game. Ban him or I'll never put Magic products in my Amazon wishlist for other people to buy for me ever again. Now, two things I want to point out. This obviously could be a troll account and probably is, but it does show you the attitude of many Magic players. I would say probably 80% of Magic players feel this way and they're all about inclusion, but to include people, we have to exclude the majority of people. So the logic behind the whole inclusion is we will include you only if we don't exclude you and only if we like you. So it's kind of like the popular kids in high school saying we're all about inclusion and rainbows and unicorn, but hey, you nerds sit in that table because we are excluding you, but we're all about inclusion. So I'm sure that we have examples, everyone has experienced something like this in their life, especially with Magic the Gathering. And the problem is, and there's a psych experiment, when you have a bunch of nerds and then there's you know jocks and popular kids above, and above quote, in the hierarchy, the nerds have to band together because, you know, to survive. It's a survival instinct. Um, they're going to band together with whoever they can band together with. It's like when you get to choose who you want to be partners with on a group project, some people are not going to get chosen just by default and they have to be in a group together. So back to this conversation of uh, PewDiePie is he is the most popular, he is the best, he is the best YouTuber, numbers, whatever you want, he has the most. And now he presents a danger to the hierarchy. The hierarchy can change. So imagine the hierarchy was the Manosaurus. I mean, how popular do you think the Manosaurus was, or how popular do you think Tolarian Community College was in middle school and high school and college and master's program for Tolarian? Probably not super popular because um, he, it's not like he received really good grades. If he had, so I'll focus on the Manosaurus. Um, he has severe IBS, which he has mentioned many times. I'm sure this does not make you, that he's not going out to party at night. And I forget what college he went to, or what major he went to, but I remember seeing it one time and it wasn't like a party. It wasn't a psychology, right? Where you could party all the time. All the time. Uh, my friend was a psych major at NYU and he would, I mean, he'd get straight A's and not even go to class ever. So I don't know. I mean, suddenly you put the guy in a popular position and you say, hey, you know, due to luck, a little bit of luck and a little bit of, hey, people relate to you, you are now the largest two YouTubers for Magic. And then suddenly their attitude, their behavior, how they engage with other content creators, as you see from their, you know, private Skype videos changes and they're bossy, they're rude. Can you imagine someone who's never had a job, even part time, be as bossy as the mana source to Darium telling Darium, hey, do not associate yourself with Jeremy from the quarterling or unsleeve media. Otherwise, Tolarian will cancel promotions and threatening his business multiple times. This is a small Magic the Gathering store in Ohio. And you have a guy with severe IBS who has never had a job telling a business owner of a store, which is his entire livelihood, how to run and who he should engage with for promotions. I don't know. Sounds like it could happen in real life. Not. Like, this is not reality, right? Reality is you put Tolarian Community College out there and you ask him to get a job. How many of us think that he could actually get a real job? Like an actual full-time W-2 health care. Okay, so I'm going to define a real job as something that can give you health care by default. 
I don't think he would last. I don't think that, um, and I think just having this narrative, um, I think the Magic Pro narrative is very similar to the Magic Content Creator narrative where you cannot, the Magic Source has not produced, as of the recording of this video, he has not produced a video in almost a month. And yet he still gets paid. I mean, tell me another job where you don't need to go to the job, you don't need to produce anything, and you will continue to be paid. Not only will you be paid the same amount, you'll be paid more because it allows you to say, I'm sick, I'm depressed. Um, one of the interesting things I see on Twitter that's trending is depression survivor as a job. Now, that's admirable that you survive depression and everyone has, I think, in my opinion, a dose of depression once in a while. But that can't be your job, right? Like your full-time job shouldn't be trying to survive depression, like not all the time, right? So I think we live in a society where uh, people who do stuff and become things like PewDiePie and uh, and want to do better and want to gain subscribers and want to advance, they're not rewarded. They're looked on and they're just like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, until he died, was not a popular figure. Many people didn't like him. Um, you're either for Apple or you're against Apple, right? I am for Apple and I love Steve Jobs, FYI. Uh, same with Tom Brady. You're either with Tom Brady or you are vehemently against Tom Brady. Same with LeBron. All the really interesting figures, uh, all the popular figures, they have haters. Um, but for someone like the Manosaurus, you know, it's just all people who love him and all people want to donate and give him a hug. Um, the conclusion I draw is we as a society are encouraging our younger generation to be as lazy as possible. Because when they look at Tularean Community College and they call him a professor, I think that takes away from an actual professor teaching at college today. And I know that they may not think he's a real professor or something. You know, they might not, but it's still a title that we assume academically that you have a PhD, that you're teaching, that you're good at what you do, that you have a, a... Society is about givers and takers. And I think there's way, just way too many takers right now. And we live in a society where if you look 25 years ago, before Patreon, before GoFundMe, Kickstarter, you had to fight. You had to get another job and do your hobby and people did fine. Now it's like donate money to me. Otherwise, I can't do my hobby, which is kind of compelling. I mean, the Mana Source and Tolarian Community College have both have videos where they say that unless we receive donations, we have to stop making magic videos. So that means like you didn't want to make magic videos to begin with. You're only doing it to get more donations, right? That's can I have a dollar? Um, can I have a dollar? Otherwise, I will either limit my magic production or I'm not going to do it at all because I have to get a real job. But people have hobbies and real jobs. People can YouTube and still have a real job. I don't see why we should, in today's society, we belittle people with real jobs. There's nothing wrong with being a truck driver for Walmart. They make 90000 plus because it's a tough job. Anyone can do it. Minus the mana source because IBS, severe IBS, right? But most people can do it. But they don't want to do it. They want the easy life. They want the office life. They want to sit there, type some stuff on social media, on Twitter, get a promo card once in a while, live in the country of Great Britain where you health care, uh, special counsel will give you homes. Uh, based on the TV I watch from the BBC, it's like an immigrant can move to Great Britain, not pay for his housing, not pay for like education, not pay for anything, and the system will support him. It's mind numbing. It's mind blowing. Uh, there's a TV show called Proud of Being on Benefits or Benefits and Proud of It. And the woman has eight children or some amount, large amount of children from different fathers. Uh, I think it was eight children from six different fathers. And they built her a brand new half a million pound home, which is like a million dollars. And she was complaining that it was near a railroad. We live in that society. And that's where you see here about PewDiePie. Is you see people who are not, um, you know, they don't like 
the hierarchy to be shaken up and they just want to it's like the gravy train I, I i the best example of this is the gravy train which the pro tour was at one point if you're on the gravy train and there's only a limited amount of spots on the train you will do whatever it takes to push people off the train you would do whatever it takes to get your seat on the train and when some big danger like a PewDiePie comes along, you will do whatever it takes to make sure that he doesn't impact because it's your livelihood. So there's two types of people in magic. There's the type of people who spend money in magic and there's the type of people whose whole entire livelihood is based on magic. So let's take the Manor Source for example. He's never had a part-time job. He's never had a full-time job. Therefore, where is, is his income coming from? Where is his plane ticket coming from? How is he able to go to GPs and injure himself all the time? How is he able, able to pay for health insurance? How is he able to pay for his diet? How is he able to pay for his training? How is he able to live in Great Britain for so long? Away from his home. And the, the answer has to be people are giving him money to do so. But I think that's actually very harming harmful to him because eventually magic will go away um or magic will change maybe mtg arena makes it all about the double lifts and the younger crowd because it may if magic becomes an esport the demographics will look nothing like it looks like today today it's like 40 year olds 50 year olds uh 30 year olds like me I, i'm no different but if Magic really becomes an eSport and moves away from paper, which I fully expect it to do, then you're dealing with a different demographic. Um, you know, I, you don't see so too many people over 30 years old in eSports. You just don't. Um, it's not typical. Um, and you can go to Overwatch League. You can go to League of Legends. You can go to that soccer one, the FIFA League. You can go to any Counter Strike. Uh, typically, um, in e or even Hearthstone, you don't see the main demographic being sixty-year-old, fifty-year-old, fifty-five-year-old college professor. And I don't. I mean, I just don't even want to use the term. It's like you did the minimal you needed to be called a professor, and that was now. Now you're known as the professor. I think that's as a branding. It's very intriguing. But as, you know, in honesty, I don't think it's very honest to uh, say that because you did the minimal you needed part-time community college, a master's, and now you're called a professor. And people think that you're intelligent and witty and, you know, all the good things that come along with a professor. You know, I mean, I think the professor who's like a basketball player on YouTube, he's more of a professor than to learn community college, Right. From the videos I see. Anyway, uh, back to why this is such an important point in our game is MTG Arena is the future of Magic. Whoever controls MTG Arena will control Magic the Gathering. And there will be a fight for it. And Paper Magic, I think we, I can assume that eventually we will abandon this in the next 10, 15 years. That there will be no value. And I know that there's no value. a lot. So I play a lot of mobile games. And the secret behind a mobile game, when you know that they're having financial trouble, is when they're asking everyone to buy like new sets that are more expensive than the regular. So we're used to paying a certain like ten dollars for a certain amount. Then suddenly they offer like a very large, better incentive amount for like fifteen, and we're like, oh wow, that's a good deal. That's what the new modern horizons is, right? It's six ninety nine a pack. So it is more expensive than a regular booster pack, which is anywhere between two ninety nine and three ninety nine, depending on who you ask. And we are going to pay more, although it doesn't cost them to produce it more, because it's still the same cardboard, and there's an unlimited supply of them, and they're more powerful than before. So it's like, hmm. I think the whole point of Legacy and Modern was that we could use our old cards and when they rotated out, they wouldn't actually, um, all of, well, not all of them would lose value, but we could hope that they would somehow retain a little bit of value. But today, we live in an area where that's not even feasible because the Modern cards, 
will be stronger than the standard cards. So if you think about it, if you think really hard about it, the fact that they can print whatever they want in modern, what, why would that be different from standard? And standard is their milk cow. So in a gacha game, which is a mobile game, whenever there is a change in how they uh, either that it's more expensive or now you get, quote, better and stronger products, you have to be very careful. It's po called power creep. And when, after you start getting the power creep, then the next modern set has to be even more powerful, right? And then even more powerful. And then suddenly, like, none of your cards that were supposedly good in standard that would be playable in modern are now playable because all the powerful cards are now in this modern set. So I would say, I would warn you that something is going to happen to our paper card game very soon. And I know this because I play lots of mobile games and I see this trend. The, the modern horizons isn't the first step, but it is probably the end game. Uh, I don't know how long the end game will take, maybe five, 10 years. But it is something where I look at and I say, ooh, that is uh, very bad. So to finish off with PewDiePie, we have a lot of people who don't like him because it's popular not to like him in the Magic community, which is insane because he's the most popular YouTuber. So imagine the most popular guy in your school and imagine like other people not liking the most popular guy just because he's popular. You know, and then they make all these excuses and they try to... He's an independent dude. He doesn't need Magic the Gathering. If anything, we need him. MTG Arena needs him. But even the, the videos, the two videos he made and the fact that he's played Magic, I'm sure he wishes Mad MTG Arena the best. Otherwise, he wouldn't produce those two videos. Uh, which is being covered, by the way, by actual eSports articles. Not fake ones that Wizard Coast paid to promote, but real ones. So how many people can be against him? And the argument is, so you you would also welcome Alex Bacini? And you look at that, 12 likes on that, right? So to compare Alex Bacini, the number one cheater who was banned forever, I mean, he just banned for life for cheating and not being able to stop himself, even though he wrote a, you know, a, a apparently sincere Facebook post, which has been removed, accounting, you know, all of his mistakes and how he gets changed and learned. And then a month later, he cheats again, right? At a small event. So you have to kind of wonder, like, was that Facebook post real or was it? So that's what they do. They drag you in the mud. And then they drag you some more in the mud. And they bring up every, no one's perfect in life. And the more content you create, the more that you can be vilified, right? Uh, the same thing with the Facebook groups. The more Facebook groups you're a moderator of, the more random people can post bad things and the more Emma can take a screenshot and then suddenly you're banned from the Pro Tour and you lost your livelihood. So I would say that our game is going to change and there will be an epic fight for the soul of MTG Arena. I think the paper card game, I've already abandoned hope on that. Um, I'm also not investing in it. I'm, I'm actively not buying collections anymore. I've decided not to do that because I don't believe in the paper card game anymore. That's why you see less finance videos. Um, I'm still buying collections to flip, but um, my margins are not as... I used to offer the best buy list. So whatever buy list you found for every card, you could sell it to me. Now I don't do that because I'm very wary of um, Modern Horizons. So I, don't, I used to buy Modern cards because I thought, okay, the reprint is not coming. But then they made Modern Horizons and there's even a bigger danger. The bigger danger is... Uh, for example, let's say that they reprint uh, Brainstorm, which they wouldn't, but, you know, let's say they would. Well, that changes all the modern cards. Now, control is a lot stronger, and anything that you invested in before is not, not viable, right? John is weaker now. Like, it's, that's the danger I feel, and that's the whole point of Modern Horizons. Anyway, I need you guys to subscribe to my other channel because I would like to take my revenge sometime soon, relatively soon. Um, the story is very simple. I think I put it on all of my videos. I need to uh, make the top 100 social media people in Houston. I have been left off that list intentionally. And I think um, it's very sad because I do have the biggest LinkedIn. 
And now I want to grab the biggest YouTube channel. So please, please, please help me. Bye, guys.